Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. I wanted to do a uh, quick video for you guys today on uh, waxing cheese at home. Cheese is one of those things that just everybody likes and uh, if something bad happens, it's probably going to be one of the first things that's going to be gone um, because so many people uh, use and uh, like cheese. So what I do is, is I, uh, I wax this cheese and uh, put it up for uh, long-term storage here in... Uh, my home. First thing I want to talk to you guys about is the uh, cheese wax. Um, you have to use cheese wax when you're doing this. You can't use uh, a paraffin wax or something like that because the cheese wax has uh, different things in it that make it more elastic. If you would try to uh, wax cheese with paraffin, it would just uh, crack and break and chip away and it uh, wouldn't protect the cheese at all because that's actually what we're doing is we're protecting this cheese from the air so nothing can get to it. Um, so you definitely want to use the actual cheese wax. Uh, one good thing about cheese wax is it is reusable. Once you take the wax off the cheese and you guys uh, use the cheese, then you can uh, save that wax and remelt it and use it for your uh, next batch. Um, talk about the cheese here a little bit. Um, any hard cheese will technically work for this, but I find that uh, a cheddar is the kind of the gold standard in doing this at home. Um, I have tried uh, different uh, types of cheeses. I've had kind of mixed results, but I've always had really, really good luck with uh, cheddar. And uh, cheddar is... I always use mild cheddar because the longer that this cheese sits, the sharper that it's going to get. So that's another thing that you want to keep in mind. Um, I have, though, opened up a cheddar that was maybe six months old, and it wasn't that sharp. So if you don't like a real, real sharp cheddar, you're going to want to use it in a shorter period of time. Um, one thing you got to do, though, when you're, uh, you're waxing cheese is you got to prep the cheese a little bit ahead of time. Now, I'm probably going to break some uh, food safety rules when I tell you guys this, but I, uh, I've had real good luck uh, using this process. But what you do is, is you open up uh, your store-bought cheese, and this is just a store-bought cheddar that I have here. And uh, I let it go about three to four days, um, and what you do is, is every day um, I dip this in uh, white vinegar. Um, all the way around and then I let it uh, dry off and I let it set and that's so the uh, the outside air can uh, and that vinegar can uh, form a rind on the cheese make a hard outside surface for the wax to stick on you can see there that that cheese is uh, nice and uh, dry on the outside and uh, that's so that the uh, wax can stick to it and then what I do the night before I'm gonna wax is I'll take uh, about two cups of water and a half a cup of uh, kosher salt and I'll mix that and then I will dip that uh, cheese into that brine solution um, let it dry off and then I'll put these uh, blocks in the refrigerator overnight to get good and cold and that's specifically so the wax will adhere to this as soon as I uh, dip it and I'm going to show you here how I go about doing it. You can see here what the uh, brick of uh, dried cheese here looks like, kind of what the rind looks like. I'm going to come over here to my uh, pot where I have my cheese wax in and I'm going to dip about half this brick of cheese into this wax. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to dip it again and then I'm going to do it a third time and then I'm going to just let it uh, drain off. and it's going to start to harden. You can see it's starting to uh, get a little bit dull in color. That means that it's hardening up and uh, looks just like that. Now we're going to set this back over here and we're going to let that harden up um, fully. I'm going to come over here and talk to you just real quick um, about my, uh, my little setup here. All I got is just a real old pot here that's not really used for anything anymore and I have a oven bag in here and that uh, oven bag kind of acts as my double boiler and then I put my cheese wax or my uh, recycled cheese wax whatever I happen to have I got a little bit of both in here right now a little new and a little recycled and I uh, just bring that up to a rolling boil to it till it melts and uh, then I just use that for my uh, for my waxing and uh, then actually I actually saved these uh, bags and then the bag can just uh, be reused again over and over. It's just my uh, cheese waxing bag. And I just got a little bit of a bamboo uh, skewer here that I use to uh, stir the wax to keep it uh, nice and uh, melted for me. Anyway, when uh, 
I got these bricks dipped about uh, two or three more times on that end. I'm going to turn them around. I'm going to do the other end. And then when I'm uh, all done uh, waxing up what I have here, I'm going to uh, explain to you guys a little bit how I go about and uh, store these here in my house. And here is the... Uh, cheese after I have them completely coated with wax. I dipped these guys uh, about three to five times to make sure that I had a uh, good coverage um, all over on uh, these bricks of cheese. You can see here there's no gaps in the uh, the wax coverage at all. They're completely covered. Um, what I have them sitting on is just a uh, piece of uh, parchment paper and that's so if I have a drip or something I don't get that sticky cheese wax all over the place. Now I've uh, used different brands of cheese. I've used Kraft, I've used Walmart brand. I haven't noticed a difference in uh, the brand as far as uh, doing this. Um, the cheddar has always uh, worked really well for me just as long as you go through that curing process of uh, dipping or brushing in, in vinegar first and uh, that helps to form that rind on there that uh, protects that cheese. If you would try to do this um, without going through that vinegar or a salt bath process, um, the moisture in that cheese is going to kind of make that cheese go to mush. So it needs that a uh, few days to cure and to uh, harden and firm up um, so this will work for you. I actually retrieved one of my uh, bricks of cheese um, that I had in my stores here to show you a little bit uh, what a piece looks like a couple months into it. This piece is probably three months old. Um, what I have here is I have a little bit of a cheesecloth and what I do is I just fold this cheesecloth over both sides kind of tight and a little bit of a bow on top and then I have a particular spot in my uh, basement where the uh, cold water pipes uh, go through and I actually store this cheese where those cold water pipes go through and then that way the uh, I guess it's a bit of a uh, passive refrigeration system as well keeps that area a little bit cooler Cold water goes through the pipes, it cools uh, the air around it, the cool air sinks, lands on my cheese, makes it all good. Anyway, I just wanted to uh, show you guys this um, and give you a little bit of an idea how I go about storing cheese. I'm not saying that this is the best for uh, everybody, uh, but this works for me, gives you a little bit of an idea. You guys can uh, maybe go do your own research, see if uh, waxing cheese uh, at home for you might be the right thing to do for uh, yourselves so you got a little bit of extra cheese in case uh, something bad happens. Just a, uh, another way that I uh, go about uh, putting food up here. Anyway, this is Modern Refugee. I appreciate all my subscribers out there. Hope you guys are getting a little information, a little entertainment out of my uh, videos and you guys have a great day.